And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our very first debut episode of Cousins with Cancer. I'm DJ Mixmaster Mitch. And I'm Silas Sideman Baby Alexander. And we're Cousins, Cousins with, with Cancer. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Uh, our very first podcast today, guys. And, uh, you know, we want to thank you for listening and checking in. And we're just going to have a conversation basically about life because both of our lives changed uh, here, um, you know, real quick. Okay. Yeah. They, they, they changed in, in, in the blink of an eye. Uh, so in today's, ep- in today's podcast episode, we just want to go back to the beginning uh, where it all started. And this is going to be a story where we just take you, uh, we, we bring you inside of our lives and we're going to tell you everything that happened up until this date. Um, now, I Why was. You start, I, tell us yours was first. You yeah. Got diagnosed before I did. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was just going to say um, my diagnosis happened in April, early in the spring uh, in April. And um, just to give you an, an, an idea, everything was going fine up until a certain date. I can't, I can't remember the exact date. Was it April 11, something like that? And uh, man, I just started having these pains in my stomach. And, uh, you know, my wife was like, okay, let's go get, you know, you us me and, oh, you know, I it's something I ate. You know, we're going to always try to throw it off on something. You know, that, them pork chops was bad. Them, them pork chops weren't good. They were bad. You know, they thought that chicken didn't agree with me, you know, but mm-hmm. um, you know, as men, uh, we we don't go to the doctor as much as we should, and we're gonna talk about that too in in, in, in podcasts upcoming. But in the beginning, my stomach was giving me uh, it started giving me fits, and I was bent over, man, at times in pain. So I uh, went to the emergency room, and um, I told them what was going on, and they said, "Okay, we're gonna give you a CT scan." I said, okay, that's like an MRI, right? Yeah, so yeah, they go in there and look at the stomach and kind of see what's going on. And uh, man, they gave me the scan. So uh, they gave me something for my stomach and I had to come back in a couple of days. Doc said, okay, I need to see you, come on in. And I got hit with the most devastating news uh, Besides, you know, when somebody told me one of Santa Claus, okay, that, <laughs> that, 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 that was, that was, that was, but this news was more, was more devastating than that. When he set me down and showed me the C- CT scan and told me that I had cancer, not just mm-hmm. cancer, pancreatic cancer, not just pancreatic cancer, stage four pancreatic cancer. And that knocked me and my wife off of our feet because, man, we I didn't get a chance to get a one, two, or three. It went straight to four. Uh, so, um, you know, we, me, my wife and I, we shed some tears. We, we, we did. I'm not going to sit here and tell you we did. Uh, now we're looking, now we know we're looking at a brand new journey. Okay, now we know we're looking at something that we've never, either of us have ever experienced. So um, the beginning, uh, up until now, uh, everything is is going pretty good. But right now, I'm going to let Simon tell you about his journey in this whole pancreatic. Well, my find out was kind of like that, I guess, but a little different. you you've said it many times, and I've borrowed your words. It, this is a very sneaky cancer, and I didn't. Uh, I had no concept that I had cancer when I went into the hospital. I was losing weight. I knew that. I knew that. Uh, you know, that really that was it. I had extreme weight loss, and I knew that I needed to get this issue fixed. For six years, I've known that I needed to have a uh, gallbladder removed. So I finally got some insurance because, you know, getting insurance is rough in our business. Um, So I finally got some insurance. 
And when I got some insurance, excuse me, we went ahead and can and, and handled that process, went ahead and got that surgery. So the gallbladder surgery went okay, but had a little bit of a complication. And I guess these days I'm saying thank God for the, for the complication, because the complication is what revealed during a CT scan, just like you said, during a CT scan that I had this big area that was not supposed to be there on my liver. And they checked it, got a piece of it, did a biopsy, and said, well, it is cancerous. It wasn't from the liver, though. It was from the pancreas. So it's already spread. So now you officially have stage four pancreatic cancer because stage four means that it has uh, spread from one organ to another. So that's where we were. And I was like, wow, you know, it kind of caught me off guard because the gallbladder was on my radar. Cancer was nowhere near it. And now all of a sudden I have stage four and I'm weak and I can't work and I'm taking chemo and all these things. So it's, it's been a journey. You know, Sai, everything after that happened so fast. And, you know, that's one part that I did leave out and it wasn't intentional was the weight loss. Um, man, you know, I caught myself on this keto diet. I said, oh, man, I'm, I'm rocking this keto. You know, hey, six pounds one day, eight pounds. My wife was like, no, nah, bro. Yeah, I mean, maybe a couple pounds, but not no six or eight. That's kind of extreme. You, your metabolism burning, but. You ain't burning like that now, you know. So, um, you know, weight loss is, is the big thing. And let, let's talk about how it affects your eating, man. That's that's something that both of us uh, uh, have been through. And, and, and at times, we, we, we're we still kind of, you know, going through it. Uh, tell, tell us a little bit, man, about, uh, about the process of, of losing your taste and losing your appetite. Well, here's the funny thing. Okay, so... Back in uh, Thanksgiving of 2020, okay, so November 2020, I and my wife both uh, contracted COVID. So we didn't have to go be on a respirator, but we did lose our sense of taste and smell and have to stay home for two weeks and this, that, and that. So we did all that. Taste was gone. Smell was gone. And when this happened again, I guess in February, I'm saying to myself, self you know, you have to ask that question. Is this a long haul COVID situation? Because my food is not tasting right. It's just not tasting right. It, it, it It's kind of like somebody took my food meter and, and turned it a few degrees off, you know? So nothing tasted like it was supposed to, water didn't taste like it was supposed to taste. Drinks, no food, nothing tasted like it was supposed to taste. And, uh, you know, I was a big vegetarian for a long time. Most of what I ate was vegetarian-based foods. But uh, it just wasn't working for me. And it turns out that, you know, in moving forward, and I lost so much weight, I needed to get some protein on. I tried some meat, and the meats are, I can, I can work with them now, I guess, because it's a matter of survival for me. But... Uh, the meats, I can work with the meats now. Uh, and I'm eating meat almost every meal, you know, some type of meat, uh, which is something I haven't done in years and years. How about you? Well, you know, my story, man, is similar to your story because that metal taste in your mouth, man, is just horrible. Uh, it's horrible and it's, 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 it's cruel. Uh, I tell people now, Sai, you can you can vouch for this. Uh, I was a 400 pound man. I've been big all my life. OK, I went from 400 pounds to 209 pounds. OK, mm. that's that's I'm talking about real quick because it's a lot of dude. That's a lot. I, I lost a dude. OK. I, I, a whole dude jumped off my back. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but what happened, and, and here's the weird thing, not eating for about a month, I wasn't, still wasn't hungry. I was mm -hmm. not hungry, okay? 
So I decided to get some of these protein shakes. My, my, my brother Norris brought me some protein shakes to start doing. And they, they, they were satisfying, but they were nothing compared to a meal. I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you. They, they were good for a snack or whatever you, you, could, you, could, you could have, but not a, not, not a meal replacement. No, in no way, no fashion. But what I did, my wife said, okay, you love grits. Okay, I'm a, I'm a southern boy, you know. I'm 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 from the country, you know, just like side, you know, country. Wait, wait. <laughs> so, she went down there, man, and fixed me a bowl of hot grits. Man, I told them grits up. Okay, let me tell you, put a little butter in them and a little salt, and I went to town. And after that, I start breaking. I start I started breaking, and. I went from 212 to 225, 225 to 240. Now I'm back at 251. Um, so I'm eating regular. Now I'm going to tell you, some foods still don't taste the same. Uh, I went from a condiment guy to now I don't even eat condiments. When I say condiments, ketchup, mm -hmm. mustard, mayonnaise, wait a little mayo. Mayo is still good, but those things have so much sugar in them to me and I can taste it and, and, and have some kind of taste to it that I'm tasting a sweetener or something in them and they just don't taste uh, good. So um, the eating, the eating thing, man, was, was big. Uh, and talking to, you know, talking to patients and, that's the number one thing that people have problem with is beginning to eat again. I noticed that too, talking to a lot of uh, pancreatic cancer uh, people, the eating is the biggest thing to get back on track. And, and I had to make myself eat. And I, I told Sai, I, I said, Sai, man, you got to make yourself start eating, you know, because you will deteriorate fast. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're Cousins with Cancer. This is Cousins with Cancer's podcast. Uh, episode number one coming to you uh, from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, that's where we're located. Uh, you need more information. Uh, you want to join the conversation uh, with us here in the future. Uh, it's CousinsWithCancer.com. You can go to our webpage. Or you can hit us up at CousinsWithCancer at gmail.com and ask us any questions or any information you want to know. Now, you can also donate to our calls at our CousinsWithCancer.com page. Uh, both of our links are up there with GoFundMe, and we appreciate any uh, donations that you can help us with. Because, so we're gonna talk about these bills, man. We got to be real. Uh, the yeah. bills is real, okay? Them cancer bills yeah. are different than them household bills. Uh, yeah. We talk about what insurance will and won't pay for. Uh, we talk about medicines insurance will and will not pay for. And I understand you're dealing with some 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 medicine that. Man is 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 really expensive. I got one right now that uh, it stimulates the appetite, but you know it was almost not approved by the insurance company. I guess because it's so expensive. I don't know what was in it that makes it so expensive because the copay on it was real. Uh, you know, one insurance company, the copay said it was two hundred thirty-two dollars. That's the copay. And uh, it doesn't matter you know, what the medicine costs. Is that if the copay is exactly. too much amount? So I, I don't I don't know what the medicine costs. That was that's the question, but it was is very expensive, and the, and the insurance company can really frustrate you. They they said no at first, but we ended up you know kept working with it, prodding at it until they came up with a yes. And I'm gonna be real. It, it's called. Um, um, Oh, shoot. It starts with an M. I can't remember the name of it now. I have it next show. But it does make a difference in my eating. Uh, it, 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 I can I can I take that pill and later on I, I want I want a lot more to eat than I normally do, where I might do five wings and call it a day after I take that um, mandarin. Um, I figured out anyway. Uh, after I figure out, is that the one that uh, yeah. The one that makes you eat, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, but but once I take it though, it makes a difference. 
um, makes a humongous difference. So, I well, can't help, but. man, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm so glad to see you eating because that was a uh, that was something I was worried about with you uh, here um, in, in the past couple of months. What was your eating and you know, you can kind of tell when somebody's not eating. Uh, you you can tell you you you're weak as as man. I don't know what. Uh, you need help and moving around, and you know people scared you're gonna fall, and you know everybody just got eyes on you, and you know where you're going, and you know all this stuff. And but when you're eating, you feel that strength coming back. You know, yeah. face starts to fill out. Uh, you know, you start to be able to walk on your own and, you know, you got a little, little pep in your step a little bit, not too fast, you know, not too, you know, I don't want to rush it. it it's it's going to come back naturally. But uh, both of us have made uh, strides in our our health and, and coming back to where we need to be. And, and like I always tell you, it's a process. Um, but I want to get back to these insurance companies. We're going to we're going to have a we're going to have a powwow about these insurance companies on, 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 on a podcast episode because uh, I don't think cancer patients are getting a fair shake, man. I, you know, now being a, a cancer patient, uh, it's something wrong with the way this insurance is set up for cancer patients uh, in in the richest world, you know, that, that supposedly they brag about we're in the richest country. Uh, That's so- right. I, I see something wrong with it, uh, with that whole thing. But that's, that's why they're the richest, though. Huh? That's that's why they're the richest. Yeah, yeah. The richest because they they don't give breaks to folks who need right. it. Right. You know, they, they're trying to make money off everything. I mean, yeah, hospitals are complaining about having no beds uh, because of COVID right now, and I'm sure it's wearing their people out. I'm sure it is. But the other side of it is, hospital and healthcare is a business. At the same time, they're upset that they don't have enough beds to accommodate every patient. They are happy that all their beds are full all the time with somebody that's going to get a bill. And you better believe you're going to get a bill, which is why you better take all that stuff serious. Well, you know um, what? So, yeah, like uh, you, you just mentioned, big shouts out to our frontline workers, man. Uh, yeah. You guys have been amazing. Uh, the, the the staff that takes care of me, you know, is amazing. And, and in these COVID cases, uh, a back trying to, you know, do their thing. And, you know, big shouts out to the frontline workers, man. Big, big, big ups to you guys. Uh, we, we, we couldn't, uh, we couldn't do it without you. So uh, kudos to you guys as well. Uh, once again, this is Cousin with Cancer's podcast. Uh, every Tuesday and Thursday at 12 noon Eastern time. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, on our individual Facebook page. Well, we're going to transfer everything here. Uh, that we're talking about in future shows to our cousins with cancer.com page and you'll be able to find all the podcasts uploaded there and then you know we're gonna go hey we're gonna take this thing big time too man and we're gonna be on the apples and spotify's and everything like that so we're gonna uh give everybody a chance around the world to uh, talk about it now so man uh this is uh this is breast cancer awareness month but yeah. you brought up a great point earlier about a cancer that is devastating to women. Tell us a little bit about that. You know, uh, it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so big shout to all the survivors of breast cancer. Um, no matter how long you you survived, you have survived. We need to all celebrate that and continue to uh, celebrate for those other people that are continuing to try to survive as they battle, fight and battle this uh, this cancer. But uh, Thinking about cancers that are specific to ladies, uh, ovarian cancer is a lot like colon cancer. It's slick, it's 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 sneaky, and it doesn't give you a warning. And by the time you find uh, women that you have ovarian cancer, in most cases you're at stage four, just like with pancreatic cancer. So it is it is very sneaky, very dangerous. I know that there are some researchers at Georgia Tech who are working on looking at both of those cancers and trying to find something that will notify people in stage two or maybe stage one. Uh, There's a company too uh, that we heard about that we need to do a little more research on to see where they are in the development of that product uh, that says that they have come up with something for pancreatic cancer for stage one or stage two. 
So, you know, those are great. If, if, if those are coming to fruition, that is wonderful. Uh, and we need to all get behind it. We need to find ways that we can take advantage of it. Well, I want to I want to echo your sentiments, man, on the breast cancer survivors. Uh, big shouts out to you for, for continuing the fight. Uh, this whole thing is a fight. All right. So that, that right now, so man, we're going to end it on that note. And uh, what we're going to do Thursday, we, we're going to talk about how the families handled our uh, cancer announcements. Uh, we're going to start with the with the wives and the, and the children and uh, the families, how how they were. You know, my family, I'm telling you right now, they they. It, it, it didn't set well, but uh, we're going to talk about that Thursday show, uh, how the families handled uh, our announcement about uh, and, and, how, and how that affected us. You had to affect us. Well. The way the way that the family takes it yeah. definitely affects the way we try to deal with it. And we're going to talk about also the way we announced it, how 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 the unique way that we announced that we had cancer to the world as well. Okay. So yeah, yeah stay tuned. Simon, man, thank you so much. Uh, this is the Cousins with Cancer Podcast. Once again, I'm Mixmaster Mitch. Don't forget cousinswithcancer.com. You got any questions or information you want to share with us? Cousinswithcancer at gmail.com. Email us and uh, we'll definitely uh, answer your emails and, and we will correspond to you. So until Thursday, 12 noon right here, check us out and uh, we appreciate you. And Cousins with Cancer, we're out. Thank you so much. Have a great one.